Dear ladies and gentlemen, despite my whole research and academic career is connected to health and medical faculty, when I received an invitation from World Congress of Internal Medicine, my first thought was they mess up the names. I'm not a medical doctor. It was meant to be delivered to my colleagues. But then I read it. I saw there are terms like early career, soft skills, leadership, ethical challenges, and I was immediately on a board. My deep respect and admiration to every medical faculty, hospital manager, senior in medical education and training, who realized the importance of healthcare workers' resilience, psychological safety of the work environment, and focus on their competence to take care for their own health and health of their colleagues. Human resources are the most precious and the most fragile amenities we have had. We have to take care for them. However, Despite it's one of the four pillars of quadruple aim for high quality health care, and despite it's one of the main roles in Kahneman's framework, I'm convinced that there is still a long journey to reach its prioritization. It was also the reason why I joined European Research Network working on second victims, which aim to facilitate discussion and share scientific knowledge and best practice concerning adverse events and second victim support in healthcare institutions. I will start my lecture with a story which might happen anywhere, and I will ask you for help. Try to be for a moment Lucy, a hero of my story. Try to be in her shoes and Try to imagine her emotions, her thoughts, her doubts, and her motives, and finally her, her action. So try to develop the story when I will talk it from the position of the Lucy. Lucy worked at the COVID department where it was always busy, as you can imagine. Ambulances waiting at the entrance, doctors running up and down, too many patients, even bad cases, and not enough. Fortunately, they got a medicine to treat the worst cases with, let's call it calcium, of course it's a fake name. When they ran out, the company sent in a bigger package than usual. To make the distribution easier, somebody had to divide it, it in a smaller portion and of course somebody did it. Lucy was responsible for administering the medication to patients. She noticed, however, that after administering it, the patients fell asleep. Her suspicion grew as she encountered more cases and she went to research the side effects. When she found the original packaging, she was shocked to discover that the label was not the same. Instead of calcium to help them recover from COVID, the patients were given calmium, a drug similar in name, usually used for sedating patients. Calmium didn't cause any harm, but it prevented them from possible healing if they had taken the correct medicine. What do you think? What's happened with Lucy? What was her emotion? What she feel? What about she been thinking? What doubts she has? And what, what she will do? Will she spoke up? Or will she withhold the voice? Imagine Lucy spoke up about the medical error to her nurse manager. We can only speculate what happened after Lucy spoke up. Perhaps she was awarded for her discovery because thanks to her, the hospital could correct their mistake. Or maybe it caused tension and conflict in her team and she was seen as a troublemaker and shunned by the group. It might be she will be asked by her nurse manager to disclose this incident to the patients. She might be training it and she might not be training it. All my lecture will be about the Lucy, and as you will see, it's not a matter if it will happen to you, but when it will happen to you. So it's in your own interest to take care for psychological safety in your environment and your resilience to be able to pass this experience without serious harm. We will start with explaining what are the patient safety incidents, how prevalent adverse events are, and who are the victims. Then I will introduce you a second victim phenomenon, and we will talk about coping mechanisms, symptoms, stage of, stages of recovery. And I will close my lecture with some knowledge we already have had about supporting healthcare workers facing adverse events. We go to hospital because we need help and we believe we will be treated properly by trusted healthcare professionals and we hope our health problems will be fixed. However, not always it goes well. 
despite patient safety as a priority in nearly a quarter of hospital admission and around 7% of primary care patients experience adverse events annually, with approximately half of them being preventable. A patient safety incident is an event or circumstance which could have resulted or did result in unnecessary harm to a patient. It could be a a near miss, an unplanned event that had the potential to result in harm, but fortunately it didn't. It could be no harm incident when error happened, but fortunately it did not result in harm. Or it could be an adverse event, so an incident that resulted in harm to a patient. We should consider also intention, as it could be an intentional error, a failure to carry out plan action as intended, or application of an incorrect plan. But in some cases, it could be a violation, so intentional deviation from the procedure or rules. And it could happen that patient needs are simply neglected. When something wrong happened, many people have a tendency to question who is guilty. But I even don't want to enter this discussion, and I will leave you with this complicated model of Swiss cheese trying to model root cause analysis. I would rather pay attention to the question, who is the victim? With no doubt, the first victim are the patients that suffer healthcare associated harm and their families and friends. There is much less awareness about the existence of a second victim, and moreover, there is an ongoing discussion about the term victim. Could healthcare worker involved in even be a victim? Do they suffer harm? Are they impacted by, by the event? As I will show you later, with no doubt, yes, they suffer a lot and with no regard to their real contribution to the event. But there is also a third victim, the healthcare organization who could suffer loss of reputation depending on how the situation is handled by the institutional leader. And there is also the fourth victim, as I will show you later. You choose medicine because you want to witness a miracle of healing, being that one contributing to it. Unfortunately, there are also that bad days, days when things go wrong, mistakes happen. Instead of healing, the health of patient is worsening. You have to communicate bad news and you feel heavy emotional burden related to it. On a picture, you can see an outcome of systematic review and meta-analysis aiming to quantify the negative impact of adverse events on healthcare workers. They suffer from a troubling memories, anxiety, anger, distress. They feel guilty, they feel embarrassed, they, they feel regret. They were afraid of future errors, concerns regarding colleagues' reactions, litigations. If they feel poor, if they suffer, if they utilize maladaptive coping strategies, if they doubt about their clinical competence, if they feel vulnerable and not protected, not supported, the likelihood of further errors and suboptimal care increase. They might try to avoid unpleasant feelings in the future and modify their clinical decision. What can result in defensive medicine, which aim to prevent adverse events to feel protected, or because they simply doubt about their clinical competence due to previous adverse events, they might overuse the procedures and treatments with risk to the patient. They might simply postpone the clinical decision or not be able to do a clinical decision anymore. They might give up this effort to be a good professional, what might result in negligent behavior. All this open floor for four victims, a future patient who might not get proper help. European studies indicate that around 72% of healthcare providers in hospitals and 62% in primary care reported having suffered the second victim experience in the previous five years. Another study tried to identify coping strategies used by second victims and distinguish task-oriented, avoidance-oriented, and emotion-oriented strategies to handle this situation. We might distinguish adaptive and maladaptive strategies based on their impact on psychosocial adjustment of second victim, or appropriate and inappropriate with regard to patient safety, or functional and dysfunctional with regard to performance and resilience of institution. About two-thirds of second victims show dysfunctional coping strategies. They tend to isolate, tend to use defensive medicine, suffer from poor mental health and substance abuse, or develop post-traumatic stress disorder. They might left their job, and in worst case, they might commit a suicide. One study shows that the co-business experience 
participants take about one year. Another study shows that one-fifth of second victims fail to cope with this experience. So magnitude and seriousness of this problem is huge. The way how second victim cope with their situation might differ, but mostly we could identify six stages of recovery. Immediately after the event, it might be quite chaotic thinking about what's happened. Trying to manage a patient in a crisis, one might not be able to calm down and reflect what's happened. In the second stage, intrusive reflection might hit in a full power, and person tend to re-evaluate the scenario, suffer from feeling inadequate, tend to isolate from the others. In the third stage, the effort to restore personal integrity takes place. Person might seek support from a trusted colleagues or family. The challenge is to manage gossips and often fears. Then they have to endure the inquisition, respond to multiple questions about the event, pass the procedure of disclosure to patient and, and family. It might be also the time when they obtain emotional first aid. The concern about litigation might emerge as well. And the final stage is moving on. Generally, there are only two bad and one good trajectory to choose. One could drop out, transfer to a different unit, hospital or job. So, gave up. Or co ways, but in a maladaptive way. So, intrusive thoughts, unpleasant feelings will stay with him, her. You are alive, but you, your life is poor. Or, strive, cope with, learn from this experience and use it for improvement. Leaving means we are losing the most precious workforce and pressure on those who stay in healthcare just increase. Surviving is associated with dysfunctional coping strategies like substance use, defensive medicine, negligible behavior. Both just increase the likelihood of further patient safety events. In fact, there is only one way out of this miserable situation, and it means brace yourself, fight for help and support. And I'm intentionally used the term fight for help, not ask for help, as studies show that alarming 86% of professionals reported that they received no counseling and 56% no institutional support. Of this, quarter required time of work, quarter need to be transferred to a different department. So you have to fight for it and you have to do it now, before you became a second victim, to have it in dispose when you will need it. The second victim experience and support tool, Celeste, was created to better understand the needs of the second victims and to assist the implementation of support resources by the institutions. You could download it from the website if you will book for it. As you can see, the majority of the healthcare workers would prefer to have a respected peer to discuss the details of what happened. The patient safety incident is an opportunity for improvement which we should not miss. So what we could do for second victims, what they need and what they don't need. They need to talk about the event with someone who knows their job, could help them to understand it, will not blame them, will not reject them. They don't need the questions who did, how it could happen, but rather what's happened and how they feel. They need a safe space to express their feelings. They need emotional rest. They need day off, for example. They need somebody who will keep eye on them, will actively monitor maladaptive coping strategies. They need information, they need advice, what to say and whom to talk, and they will need also legal advice. They need assurance that the situation will be handled fairly and properly. Most of them care more to prevent similar situation than their reputation harm. So hush up is not a way to fix it. Peer support is an emotional first aid and its aim is to reduce acute distress, foster adaptive coping strategies and facilitate access to help. It's great if it could be available immediately or shortly after the event. Peer supporters not just support second victim when adverse event happened, but in between they spread the knowledge, increase the awareness about it. They contribute to psychological safety in work environment. But peer supporters need training and supervision and support. Susan Scott proposed three-stage intervention model of second victim support. It starts with a peer support from the colleagues and leader of the unit. But 
It expects that the unit has the basic awareness about the second victim phenomenon, that they are able to identify colleague in the need, assess the need, and, and give the support. About two-thirds of second victims sufficiently benefit from this level of peer support. If this is not sufficient, second victim should be referred to a special trained peer, so the second level of the support. When the needs of the second victim exceed the expertise of the peer supporter, they can be referred to a professional counsellor. About one-third needs some additional help and only about 10% needs professional help. Aaron Antonovsky tried to find out who are those people who are able to cope with very difficult situations. We usually use the term resilience, but Aaron Antonovsky called it sense of coherence. We believe that people who believe that world and life is understandable, manageable, and meaningful are those who are able to go through hell and strife, grew up. Organization could support comprehensibility by providing systematic follow-up of the event with objective clarification of the facts of the case, guidelines, protocols, procedures, trainings, which enable root cause analysis might be very helpful. Manageability is supported if organization enables second victim to rest, enable them to report the case and complaints in blame-free atmosphere, support coping with the situation as needed. If organization recognizes the knowledge gained from the error, enables second victim to contribute to it, if new preventive measures are derived from it, then meaningfulness could be supported as well. EMS Network Pick five examples of interventions successfully implemented in hospitals. You find more information in podcasts available in Ernst webpage. Kohi, RICE, and For You Team are peer support programs. MICE is an online training how to provide help. An intervention in Brazil is focused on local unit leadership ability to provide a support. If you want to learn more about this issue, International Journal of Public Health recently published special call on healthcare worker resilience. Ernst Consortium prepared a training program and there is also an online resource in several languages available for free. Thank you very much for your attention.